I'm John Hanna for City TV.net, and we have David Langton joining us here in New York City. Thanks for joining us, sir. It's my pleasure. So, David, um, tell us about uh, uh, your background. Well, I'm a visual communication uh, expert. I work in New York City at a design firm called Langton Cherubino that I founded with my business partner, Norman Cherubino, 17 years ago. And I do visual communication for large companies like Pfizer and MetLife and for a lot of small and medium-sized companies that are looking for a way to express themselves with an effective brand online, in print, or in person. Okay, when you say visual marketing, what is that, uh, the difference between that and a graphic designer? Well, visual marketing is basically an expression of how graphic designers can use their work today in ways that are effective for business. Okay, which is uh, leading up to your book, which is the name of the book is? Visual Marketing. <laughs> Um, so um, that book, um, when people pick up that book, what would they see on that book? Well, what they find in this book is a, an association of 99 case studies, and we've put them in three chapters. The first one is about online, and it shows you online solutions. It gives you lots of ideas on how you can promote your business online. The second chapter is uh, in print and you can see that print is still very viable. It's still uh, a very important association for businesses today. And the third is more experiential graphics, things that you can do in person, whether at a trade show or when you meet somebody across the table and you want to give them a good impression with your business card. Part of our philosophy is that your visual marketing really needs to work in all areas of your life. So it's not just having a nice website or just having a nice business card, but having it work in all areas of, of your work and business life because your identity and your brand needs to be consistently expressed in these three areas. And these three are the most important areas because they pretty much encompass all marketing. Okay, it's kind of like uh, the way I'm thinking of would be like Steve Jobs, the way he would dress up like a black shirt and a, and a jeans, right? That's his trademark all throughout. Right, so he had created kind of a personal brand that when he showed up, that's the way he's going to look and that's the way he's going to act. And in some ways, we all need to do that. We need to have a way that our company should be expressed publicly to the people that we want to work with so that there's a consistency in how we do it. Now, consistency doesn't mean that you do the same thing all the time. It's, it's not like wearing, you know, Charlie Brown's shirt with a little zigzag on the, on the bottom that he wore in every single comic strip. It's, it's having a little bit of a flair and a distinctive style that can change and adapt and kind of surprise people. So maybe you have something that's like a little bit different on each time, but the overall effect is that you are presenting yourself in a consistent manner with maybe an unexpected surprise. So tell us about one of your strategies for part one, which is the online visual marketing. Well, one of the things you want to do online is, is you want to come up with something that's a little bit unexpected, and yet again, as I was saying earlier, still ties back to your core brand. One of the case studies that we feature in the book is called Masterpiece Yourself. And in Masterpiece Yourself, what we did is we created a, design, a, a website where you can take your picture and then you can put inside a famous painting like the Mona Lisa. And then you can save it and you can send it to your friends, post it on your Facebook, uh, send the email home to your mother if you'd like. What it does is it gets all the people involved in being part of the creative art process. And for us as a design firm, that was an interesting way to catch attention for people, to show them that we can build websites and build games and do things that are fun and also engage our audience in something that's creative. And that's what our company is essentially about. We're trying to do visual marketing for people to show them they can be creative in a marketing mode. So Masterpiece Yourself is kind of an unexpected thing, but then when you step back and you think about it, you go, oh, well, that ties in very directly with the kind of business and the kind of work that we do. Ah. No, I, I, it sounds familiar. There's like an app out there for that one. Um, like a, a friend of mine would actually show me that she was able to put her face on a billboard on a, on a, on a, on a, on a picture. Yes. I mean, there's so many exciting things. We, we feature another one called Gold Run that creates virtual realities for people so that you can do that very trick. You can actually 
take your photo or take the photo of a celebrity and superimpose it in front of the book stand in Barnes and Noble. So it has this way of creating a virtual reality. And it's using the new technologies and the new media opportunities to promote your company in a new way. It's unexpected, and yet it still ties back to your core business philosophies. Okay. Have you done apps for this one? Uh, we do feature a couple of apps in the book, but uh, we are not app designers. We're more conceptual designers, and what we like to do is give examples of things that people can do to try to reposition themselves or to kind of reawake the public on what they do best. All right, because there's that personal touch where the uh, customer base would be able to say, you know what, I like this uh, uh, application or this design because of, 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 of it's kind of like a, a marketing for whoever is the uh, for whoever is on the uh, background using that app. Let's say, for example, they want to print out that thing or make a postcard out of it or like make a, a coffee cup mug out of it too. Uh, it kind of goes back to in the old days. I don't know if they're still in the they're still doing this thing now, but you go to a theme park, a big name theme park. Uh, I don't want to say <laughs> the name, but uh, they can take a picture of you and put you on a Newsweek magazine or a Time magazine, and you're on the front page cover. Right, and I know even more recently, theme parks like uh, you know the big ones that like Disney, for instance, has rides when you're done riding it they take your picture most of them do this they take your picture and then you see your picture of yourself coming off the flume or coming out of i was at universal and they do it with harry potter so it looks like you're flying around and you have a customized portrait of yourself inserted into the action so step one is to create a experience for someone capture it on film and then give it to them step two and this is where you know disney and universal step in they track that information and then they send you a brochure for you know another vacation featuring the types of stuff that you told them you like to do so there's an, an ongoing relationship that's established through the visuals that come at the beginning of the process and the thing about that is that those people who had those pictures taken is going to be showing off those pictures with their friends and families again promoting Disney or whoever Tim exactly. Park was doing yeah. that it's it's, it's, you know, they've been doing this for years, and this is, you know, now we do it all the time on Facebook. We come <laughs> home and we don't put everything on Facebook. So, <laughs> right. so it is kind of, uh, one of the uh, uh, viral kind of marketing would be just to get that um, link, uh, a personal link to, to a product or, or, or a service, right? Absolutely, and one of the things we, we feature this company that's called Expert Laser Services, and what they did was a very simple idea, but they created a YouTube contest, and they fix laser printers and sell laser printers, and what they offered their clients was um, ways to destroy your computer. Can you come up with a creative way to destroy your computer or printer? And they had people submit their favorite ones, and they had people throwing them off buildings and smashing them on the ground and creating these crazy hunting uh, motifs in the woods where they're shooting down their printers and people just working out all their anxieties and how much they hate the printers when they don't work. And it's wonderful because it creates this whole appreciation for clients who are going through that same frustration and then at the same time reminds them that, hey, this is a place where you can get that printer replaced or fixed. And uh. the big thing about them was it wasn't about getting you know thousands and thousands of entries in the contest. In fact, they got under a dozen. But it was successful because they posted them online and they became viral and they got thousands of eyeballs looking at these funny videos and in, in turn turned into you know, four or five thousand dollars in new sales, which for a small local laser repair shop, this was great business. Yeah. But there gotta be a disclaimer about it, right? Because uh... <laughs> <laughs> don't try this at home. <laughs> right. <laughs> or the office. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Um, all right, so that ends the uh, part one. Pretty good uh, uh, right off the uh, gate here. There's pretty, uh, pretty much several uh, strategies already. So we're going to go with part two. We're going to finish up this part one. Where can people find you online? Online, you can find us at visualmarketingbook.com. All righty. That's David Langton, and I'm John Hanna for CDTV.net. <laughs>